Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Jane Mutoni. The First Lady of the Republic of Rwanda, Jeanette Kagame, pointed out that gender equality is a way to develop strong families through partnerships and complementarily of couples. Hungary has announced that it will open its consulate in Rwanda early next year in 2022 to facilitate trade and investment, as well as strengthening good relations between the two countries. News in details today, President Paul Kagame chaired the 10th Smart Africa board meeting, bringing together over 30 African countries and partners working together to accelerate Africa's social economic development through digital transformations. In his remarks, the head of state noted that the broad network of stakeholders involved in Smart Africa is what gives the organization its vibrancy and value for the African continent citing examples of new blueprints uh, being launched by Burkina Faso on ICT skills, Ghana on e-payment, South Africa on artificial intelligence, and Zimbabwe on agritech. According to President Paul Kagame, these are frameworks for the entire continent, not just the countries that have championed them. He also welcomed the financial supporters who made the Smart Africa possible. He urged parties to work hard to spread the Smart Africa blueprints, saying they have the capacity to bring about Africa's digital transformation. Smart Africa's mission is to define the continent's digital agenda and drive the continental single digital market. All this is done through a series of projects and activities. Under the current arrangement, each member country's SPAY heads a project that is aligned with Smart Africa's vision. The First Lady of the Republic of Rwanda, Jeanette Kagame, pointed out that gender equality is a way to develop strong families through partnership and complementarily of couples. She was speaking at the Gender Equality Forum on the Future of Women Empowerment in Africa held in Tanzania. The Gender Equality Forum was attended by various dignitaries, including the Prime Minister of Tanzania, Kasim Majariwa. During a discussion on the future of women empowerment in Africa, the First Lady of Rwanda, Mrs. Jeanette Kagame, said it was gratifying to see the Conference on Gender and Inclusive Development held in a country led by women, referring to President Samia Saluhu Hassan of Tanzania. She said it was important for people to understand gender equality and complementarity and its importance in development. To this day, the biological differences between the sexes are frequently mischaracterized as a justification for gender inequality. They are not. Instead, they are an indicator of how complementary our respective offerings can be. Gender equality isn't about uplifting one gender. It's about uplifting the community by empowering every individual that can contribute to our society's progress, well-being and stability. Gender equality is the common appreciation of the unseen, yet essential, efforts of invisible... Mrs. Kagame pointed out that in rebuilding Rwanda after the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, it called for a united front for men and women. To build a post-94 Rwanda, the contributions of all available human capital had to be put to use. The nurturing nature of women, the sensitivity that nourishes the unconditional love for their children, needed to be capitalized upon to engage an entire nation in the testing task of communal healing. The gift that womanhood offers the community is the antithesis of enmity and death, and that's love and life. For a continent that has been scarred by centuries of oppression, but bears the resilience of and drive to overcome, these are the energies that must be tapped into. The First Lady explained that on the African continent, many girls have been forced into early marriages or even forced to drop out of school to work and support their families, among other issues. It is alleged that if the trend continues, Africa will not realize its development agenda 2063. Mrs. Jeanette Kagame also stressed that East African countries are among the best in the world, where children have access to free education in primary schools, making families less likely to have to decide who goes to school between a boy and a girl as it was before. 
According to Mrs. Kagame, this program is complemented by scholarships for vulnerable and brilliant students in higher learning institutions, where she cited the example of Imbuto Foundation, an organization she founded that has provided scholarships to thousands of children from disadvantaged backgrounds. Reporting for RTV News, Ethan Tashabia. Now, Hungary has announced that it will open its consulate in Rwanda earlier next year in 2022 to facilitate trade and investment as well as strengthening good relations between the two countries. Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Seattle, on Wednesday paid a working visit to Rwanda after visiting the Kigali Genocide Memorial Site and paying his respects to the 250,000 genocide victims buried there, Minister Ziato met with his Rwandan counterpart, Dr. Vincent Riruta. Discussions between them were held privately. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Vincent Riruta, says the two countries are committed to building sustainable cooperation at various levels, including training that Hungary will provide to Rwandan diplomats in order to equip them with enough skills. Our cooperation is going well and we are having a vibrant relationship between both countries and we, are, we aim to taking it to the next level at uh, both government to government relationship, business to business and people to people uh, levels. We are going to work on all these and we we are hopeful that this relationship, this cooperation, is going to support uh, the development program of Rwanda. And that trade and investment will also be strengthened between Rwanda and Hungary. The two sides agreed to work together in terms of water, sanitation and hygiene, where the two countries signed a loan agreement worth 52 million US dollars, equivalent to 52 billion Rwandan francs, for the project of expanding the Karenja water plant. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uzion Dejimana, signed the agreement on behalf of Rwanda and thanked Hungary, saying that this is a significant contribution to the well-being of the people of Kigali and its outskirts, as the capacity of the Karenja factory is going to multiply supply from 15,000 cubic meters to 36,000 cubic meters of water per day. This credit will be paid at the cost of 0% interest rate in 30 years, including a six-year grace period. This is very generous from the government of Hungary. Kigali City and its surrounding areas continue to grow at a rapid pace and the demand for water supply uh, is also increasing significantly, which calls for increased investments in water supply and sanitation infrastructure. The government of Rwanda, therefore, is grateful for this support from the government of Hungary. Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Peter Seattle, said his country is pleased to partner with Rwanda on the development journey and pointed out that the project is a good start for Hungarian cooperation and investment in Rwanda. Currently, Hungarian consulate is in Nairobi, Kenya. Minister Ziato revealed that for trade and economic cooperation to be accelerated and for Hungary to be able to compete in the Africa market next year, its consulate has to be established in Rwanda as well. We respect a lot the, uh, the way uh, Rwanda has been developing in the recent years. Uh, we are happy to take part in this development. Our country uh, has one of the most open economies of the world. And we know that um, uh, stepping the African markets is not easy because of the huge competition. Uh, but we do believe that, um, that this project um, in uh, Kigali will be a, a good reference to the uh, Hungarian companies. Furthermore, I'd like to inform you that on top of this tight aid credit program, the Hungarian Exim Bank, which was under the portfolio of our ministry, has opened a credit line of $46 million to help Hungarian and Rwandan companies uh, to work together who will feel encouraged after this successful project uh, to work together on a market basis. Also, I'll, we hope and think uh, that uh, this project should and will serve as a flagship and the smaller boats will, will follow the flagship and, uh, and, and, and the Hungarian companies will be able to uh, further invest in the country. I'd like to inform you finally that, um, that uh, in order to uh, grab the momentum, 
uh, we are opening a consular representation in Kigali at the beginning of next year, uh, where a dedicated diplomat for economic uh, relationships. The two countries also signed an agreement on health cooperation, where in addition to about 305,000 COVID-19 vaccines donated by Hungary to Rwanda, the two countries agreed to cooperate in the construction of vaccines manufacturing facilities and other medical facilities, as explained by the Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Gamiji. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Hungary also held talks with the Minister of Trade and Industry, Beata Uamariza Habdiarimana, and the Minister of Infrastructure, Ambassador Clever Gatete. In the talks, the two countries signed the bilateral air service agreement. The visit of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Hungary, Peter Ziato, follows the visit of his Rwandan counterpart, Dr. Vincent Wiruta, to Hungary in February 2021. Louise Mushikiwawo, the Secretary General of the International Organization of La Francophonie, called for cooperation between countries to make COVID-19 vaccines accessible to all. This Wednesday, the International Organization of La Francophonie signed a memorandum of understanding with the World Health Organization aimed at strengthening cooperation between the two organizations, promoting good health for all, fighting epidemic diseases and support for other WHO activities. The Secretary General of the International Organization of La Francophonie, Louise Mushikiwabo, called for more cooperation between countries to make COVID-19 vaccines accessible to all. La solidarité est une valeur capitale fondatrice de la francophonie, notre organisation. Collaboration is a core value in the founding of our Francophonie organization. After the process of manufacturing vaccines, the organization must do more to distribute them equally. Of the 6.8 billion already distributed all over the world, only 0.4% have already been distributed to low-income countries with more in the Francophonie. So we have to work hard to fill that gap and we will do it together because we will overcome this pandemic only if all the countries of the world can vaccinate their entire population. I would also like to point out that we must support the manufacturing of vaccines in countries. I appreciate the work done by the European Union and Biotech for the efforts of the three African countries that are going to start manufacturing these vaccines, and these are South Africa, Senegal, and Rwanda. Je félicite les trois pays qui sont déjà engagés dans cette dynamique, l'Afrique du Sud, le Sénégal, et mon propre pays, le Rwanda. The Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, added that without a solid partnership, the organization's commitment to vaccinate COVID-19 will not be achieved. We know that a lot of Francophones have suffered a lot of the pandemic and remain vulnerable. We know that many Francophonie countries have been plagued by the pandemic and still have problems due to lack of vaccines. The WHO wanted to protect at least 40% of the population in each country and 70% by mid-2022. There are 82 countries with the most French-speaking countries at risk of failing to achieve that target of 40%. I call on the Francophonie countries that have achieved this goal to provide space for acquiring vaccines. We have already achieved this objective to give their place. Well, the agreement was signed by Geneva, Switzerland, and Rwanda was represented by Ambassador Marie Chantal Guacazina. The Rwanda Environmental Management Authority has announced that the Nyandungu Ecotourism Park will be officially launched in December this year. It is a place that residents say they are eager to visit due to its natural beauty. Sam Kalisa reports. Nyandungu Urban Wetland Ecotourism Park is a recreational area between Gasabo and Kichichiro district with more than 120 hectares. There are various tree species, including those that are commonly used as herbal medicine, and more than 70 bird species. Kabira Juliet, the Director General of the Rwanda Environmental Management Authority, Rema, says the wetland had started to deteriorate before the recreation activities started. <laughs> Before we started recreational activities, the wetland had started to be deteriorated. It was mostly being used for clay mining, substandard agriculture that did not consider environmental protection.
pedestrian and bicycle path, gardens, lakes and places where people can grab food are visible in the area. Biodiversity is also returning in Nyandungu Ecotourism Park and people can easily have fun without destroying the wildlife in the area, as Rema Director General goes on to explain. This ecotourism park is 120 hectares big. It comprises uh, water ponds, it has a stream, a water stream, it has uh, walkways and bicycle lanes. Uh, it has uh, a fig forest and uh, this is made of uh, very many native uh, tree species that were got from different natural forests around the world, around the country. Yeah, so in a nutshell that's what we have, but we also have a cafe resto, which is uh, really small because we think we are not attracting huge numbers of people because then the huge numbers would somehow uh, interact with the restoration that is taking place here. Yeah, so we also have that which can serve refreshment to people who come here to do recreation activities like riding and uh, running or walking. Residents who live near the site say it is in their best interest to have such an infrastructure nearby. The place also contains organisms that can help students and researchers in scientific related studies. It will end up costing 6.3 billion Rwandan francs. Sam Kalisa, Rwanda Television News. MTN Rwanda has for the first time awarded a 1 million Rwandan francs to three young entrepreneurs through their new program dubbed Level Up Your Business. MTN says the project aims at scaling up youth employment projects to grow and create jobs for many. After a stiff competition, which saw about 200 youthful entrepreneurs competing for this grant, only three of them could make it to the end and emerged winners of 1 million Rwandan francs grant each. Mike Ndaishimi and Aline Uwasi are two of the three winners. And with this support, we'll be able to finalize the mobile application of Rukundo Board Game to have the impact not only to youth in Rwanda, but also in neighboring sub-Saharan area countries. And we are thankful for the, pro for the program and uh, it's just a stone added toward achieving our mission of creating informed and happy young people locally and internationally. We got one million with which we are going to be using to get in two ways. First of all, for the marketing of Sunday market so that we boost the market and we sell more of product of those women and youth and at the same time get the inventories for the leather materials because they have been expensive and it wasn't easy for us to sustain those costs. So part of this money is going to help us to actually get the raw materials so that we can do like regular sales. MTN Rwanda brand and advertising project manager Umurunji Rita admits their commitment to helping youth projects whose thriving was heavily affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Years ago it was really, really, it hit the economy and uh, we noticed that the youth were struggling. However, they also became innovative. They said coming up with uh, uh, businesses. So we're like, uh, even as MTN to survive as a company, we need to support the youth. It's the same plan as uh, uh, the current, uh, what we have as a country of supporting the youth. So we're like, uh, so it, 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 it's hand in hand with our mission of supporting youth. So. Uh, and, and also at that, at that point, we also had a campaign for, for youth that, was, uh, that we had launched. So it made sense only to support the youth at that time. With the support of Inkomoko, a non-profit organization, which among other things deals in supporting micro, small and medium enterprises, MTN Rwanda trained these young entrepreneurs, which centered on providing them with knowledge on how to develop their projects, make a profit, manage their assets, and the best way to find customers. Emmanuel Ruchogoza, an employee of the organization, says the remaining three will continue to be cared for. The three who won, uh, they are going to be under attention of us, we are going to help them to proceed with uh, how they are going to use the money, the money that they want, how they are going to invest it back in their business to make sure that they get profit from it. So for the ones who didn't win, they are going to come back to Inhomoko if they need support. We have also a financial company that works with Inhomoko that we can help them so that they can also get the financial support that they need.
Some of the criteria considered during selection process included the impact of business proposals towards population welfare. The Democratic Republic of Congo Armed Forces Chief of General Staff General Celeste Mbala Musente has noted that authorities that are Authorities are giving time to investigations to come out with informed conclusion on the recent allegations of M23 elements which are carried out an attack on DRC territory came from Rwanda and Uganda. The FARDC Chief of General Staff, General Bala, says, said this on Wednesday, November 10th, after meeting his Rwandan counterpart, General Jean Bosco Kazura, at Rwanda Defense Force headquarters in Kigali. Ethan Tashobia reports. This Wednesday, November 10th, the Democratic Republic of Congo Armed Forces Chief of General Staff, General Celeste Mbala Munsense, arrived in Rwanda on an official visit. General Mbala Munsense, Celeste and his delegation held bilateral discussions with the Rwanda Defense Force Chief of Defense Staff, General Jean Bosco Kazura, at the RDF headquarters in Chimihura, Kigali. The discussions centered on the regional security situation and the fight against terrorism, as explained by General Celeste Mbala Munsense. Nous sommes passés ici avec ma délégation. Our delegation is here to discuss a framework of plans established with our neighboring countries in dealing with terrorist groups and other transnational threats. This conforms with the recommendation from the African Union to combine efforts in fighting threats that hinder our collective development. General Mbala Munsense added that the discussions also looked at the mutual efforts to prevent negative forces operating along the common borders in a bid to strengthen relationship towards mutual development of citizens from both countries. Until now, we are getting varying allegations coming from different ends. We've opted to give time to expand the joint verification mechanism to do its work and give us precisions on the situation. On the recent allegations that XM23 elements conducted an attack on the DRC territory from Rwanda and Uganda, the father said Chief of General Staff General Mbalamun said that authorities are giving time to investigations to come out with an informed conclusion. Well, there you have it. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.